Have you ever wondered why the government structure in India today is so complex? It's a labyrinth of bureaucracy with layers upon layers of administration and a blend of federal and unitary features. This complexity didn't just spring up overnight. Its roots can be traced back to the early 20th century to a seminal piece of legislation known as the Government of India Act 1909. Intrigued? Join me as we delve into the Government of India Act 1909 and its lasting impacts. The Government of India Act 1909, also known as the Morley Minto Reforms, was a significant legislation. This act marked a milestone in the constitutional history of India, introducing a significant shift in the way the British Empire managed the Indian subcontinent. At the turn of the 20th century, the political climate in India was rife with unrest and the demand for political representation was gaining momentum. The British government, in an attempt to pacify the rising tide of nationalism, introduced the act with an aim to expand the legislative councils and grant Indians a greater voice in their governance. The act was drafted by John Morley, the then Secretary of State for India, and Gilbert Elliot Murray Kinnanmound, the fourth Earl of Minto and the then Viceroy of India. Thus, it's popularly known as the Morley Minto Reforms. It aimed to increase the participation of Indians in the administration without compromising on the British supremacy. The Act also recognized the communal divisions in India and for the first time introduced separate electorates based on religion, a decision that would have far-reaching consequences. In essence, the Act was an attempt to reform the administration of India in response to the rising demands for more political rights and representation. It was a delicate balance between retaining control and offering concessions, a strategy often referred to as carrot and stick policy. The act was a turning point in Indian history, introducing many new concepts and principles. The act brought about a series of reforms that greatly influenced the governance structure in India. Let's delve into these changes and examine how they reshaped the political landscape. Firstly, the act introduced the concept of separate electorates, this was a system where members of a particular community could only vote for their own representative. While this was aimed at protecting minority interests, it also sowed the seeds of communal politics, setting the stage for some of the divisive politics we see even today. Next, the Act expanded the legislative councils. Before the Act, these councils were small and lacked influence. But with the Act, their numbers were increased, giving them a stronger voice in governance. It was a major step towards involving Indians in their own governance, a move that was both welcomed and criticized. Welcomed as it allowed more Indians to participate in decision-making and criticized as the British still held the majority and ultimate authority. Finally, the Act recognized communal representation. Prior to this, political representation was largely based on geography or class. The Act, however, acknowledged the need for communal representation, giving a voice to the diverse communities in India. This was a significant move as it recognized India's rich diversity and the need for all communities to be heard. Yet, it was also controversial as it could and did lead to divisions based on religious and communal lines. These reforms were not just administrative changes, they were transformative shifts that redefined the political environment in India. They brought about greater involvement of Indians in their own governance, recognized the diversity of the Indian populace and set the stage for the future of Indian politics. But like any significant change, these reforms were not without their controversies and challenges. They stirred up new debates, ignited communal tensions and raised questions about the true intentions of the British Raj. In the end, the act was a mixed bag of progressive changes and divisive politics. These reforms were significant, but they also stirred up new challenges and controversies. The Act did not go without its share of reactions and impacts. The Government of India Act of 1909, often referred to as the Morley Minto reforms, set off a wave of responses from different sections of society. The Indian National Congress, the leading political organization of that era, was divided. The moderates welcomed the reforms, viewing them as a step towards self-government. On the other hand, the radicals saw these reforms as inadequate and deceptive, only serving to strengthen British hold over India. The Muslim League, another political entity, had a different take altogether. 
They welcomed the act for it introduced separate electorates for Muslims, a provision they had been advocating for. This, however, laid the foundation for communal politics that would later have profound implications for the unity of the nation. The act also had its share of positive and negative impacts. On the positive side, it marked the beginning of constitutional development in India, introducing the concept of representative government. It also initiated the process of decentralization, giving more powers to the provinces. However, the act was not without its flaws. The separate electorates it introduced based on religion sowed the seeds of division among various communities. It also failed to satisfy the growing demand for self-government, as the real power still remained in the hands of the British officials. The act's most significant impact, perhaps, was how it shaped subsequent political movements in India. The dissatisfaction with the act fueled the demand for Swaraj or self-rule, leading to the launch of the Home Rule Movement in 1916. It also paved the way for the Montague-Chelmsford reforms of 1919, which further expanded the scope of self-governance. In conclusion, the act, though a mixed bag of advancements and setbacks, was a crucial turning point in India's journey towards independence. It triggered a series of events that eventually led to the end of British rule in India. The act, while controversial, undeniably played a major role in shaping India's political landscape. More than a century later, the legacy of the act still resonates in India. The Government of India Act 1909, often known as the Morley Minto reforms, marked a turning point in the history of Indian governance. Its influence on India's present governmental structure cannot be overstated. It was the first time that the British government recognized the legitimacy of the Indian people's political aspirations. It introduced the concept of communal representation, creating separate electorates for Muslims, a practice that continued until India's independence. Though the act was far from perfect, its significance lies in the fact that it was a stepping stone towards a more democratic India. It laid the foundation for the principle of responsible government, an idea that would be further developed in subsequent acts related to India's governance. The act's long-lasting impacts are seen in various aspects of India's political framework. The separate electorates, though controversial, were a recognition of the diversity of India's population, a recognition that continues to inform India's pluralistic democracy today. However, the act also had its drawbacks. It was criticized for promoting communalism and for failing to provide Indians with real political power. Yet, it was a crucial step on the path towards self-governance. It paved the way for future reforms, including the Government of India Acts of 1919 and 1935, which expanded Indian participation in government and moved India closer to independence. In conclusion, the legacy of the Government of India Act 1909 is a complex one. It is a legacy of both progress and controversy, of both empowerment and division. Despite its shortcomings, the act is a significant part of India's political history. It was a catalyst for change, sparking a movement towards greater political autonomy and democratic governance. The Government of India Act 1909, despite its controversies, laid the groundwork for the democratic governance structure we see in India today. So. What have we learned about the Government of India Act 1909? Let's take a step back and revisit the significant milestones. This monumental act was a turning point in India's long road to independence. It marked the first time that Indians were allowed to participate directly in their government, albeit in a limited way. The act introduced reforms that were both progressive and controversial. We delved into the reforms brought about by the act, the most noteworthy being the introduction of the concept of separate electorates. This meant that Muslim voters would elect Muslim representatives, a provision that had far-reaching implications. It was a double-edged sword that, on one hand, protected the rights of minorities, but on the other, sowed the seeds of communal discord. We also discussed the reactions to the act. There was a mixed bag of responses. Some hailed it as a step towards self-governance, while others criticized it for not going far enough. It was clear that the act was a significant step, but it was far from perfect. Then, we considered the act's legacy and its enduring impact on India. It paved the way for further constitutional reforms and set the stage for India's eventual independence. However, it also left a mixed legacy, particularly with regard to communal relations.
In our exploration of the Government of India Act 1909, we've seen that it was a landmark piece of legislation that marked a significant shift in the British approach to governing India. It was a crucial stepping stone on the path to self-governance, despite its flaws and limitations. As we wrap up, let's remember that these historical events like the Government of India Act 1909 are not just dusty pages in a history book. They are part of our shared heritage, offering insights into our present-day realities and guiding our future actions. Remember, understanding our past can often shed light on our present. Until next time, keep exploring and keep learning.